Take a guess, what allied aircraft was name dropped the most during Luftwaffe High Command internal discussions? Was it the P-51, the P-47, the Spitfire, the Lancaster, the B-17, even the B-29 potentially as a future threat? Nope, it's the Mosquito. Let's talk about that. Welcome back to Military Aviation History. My name is Chris and I talk about military aviation and air power every Thursday on Military Aviation History Day on this very channel. Big thank you here to all the patrons and channel members who make it possible and today's sponsor, Warfunder. Warfunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game out there and it's completely free, putting you in the pilot seat of fighter jets and bombers from World War II to modern times. There are literally hundreds of aircraft to choose from. Alternatively, you can also control targets like tanks or ships, but let's be real, there is no power like air power. Find out how you can have a flying start with many bonuses at the end of the video. Now I want to give some credit here at the start of the video to Callum Douglas, the author of the Secret Horsepower Race, because he, like me, has a hobby, and that hobby is going over old Luftwaffe files and scanning them for data and new insights, and uh, oftentimes we find surprising, surprising things. And this is, in fact, based on a post that he made some time ago, where he had gone through the whole backdrop of the German internal protocols of the high command, starting 1942, that is a little bit of a caveat, and he found out that the Mosquito is actually topping the charts there. So I want to talk about the reasons why the Mosquito features so prominently. I've been going through these records myself now and I've got a pretty good idea of what was so feared about this aircraft that they were constantly, constantly talking about it. Uh, but I will say a little bit of a caveat to this ranking here is that it is based on 1942 to 1945. So it's sort of mid to late war, which means that certain planes that, they, that the Germans ran into at the start of the war, let's say for example the Spitfire, should probably be ranked slightly higher than this, but not to the point where they completely uh, obliterate the number of like B-17 mentions or mosquito name drops, right? Um, it's unlikely to make a big difference to the order here. What I will also say is that I think the bomber threat, both the, from sort of British and Commonwealth as well as the Americans, is of a uh, appears to be less significant here than it actually was during these internal records because these are just name drops. Right? So when a mosquito gets mentioned, it, it's, it's on the data sheet here. When a B-17 gets mentioned, on the it's on the data sheet here. When a Viermotorica bomber, or Viermot, as was the German abbreviation of that, with which they meant generally the Americans, sometimes the British bombers, then it's not on there. So I think if we combine the bomber threat, B-24s, Lancasters, Hastings, Stirlings, and B-17 specifically, plus those mentions, then they would be off the chart. But as single dedicated aircraft name drops where they were like, this is what this aircraft can do, this is what worries about us, about that, the Mosquito tops the chart. And I think that is quite significant because when we look at it, the start of the operations of the Mosquito are in 1941 with some recce stuff, right? Then um, 1942, we do have some daytime bomber operations with some considerable losses as well among the uh, Mosquito fleet. Um, some raiding is done there as well. Uh, Mid-1943, you start going to nighttime bombing and nuisance, nuisance raider, um, pathfinding, and of course, then also a night fighter and a night intruder trying to shoot down German night fighters um, that were preying upon Lancasters and so forth. And the mosquito starts causing alarm very early on in 1942. You start seeing this very quickly. And in 1943, by 1943, it really starts to attract attention and gain prominence. So I'm going to talk about three reasons here. Number one reason, uh, the mozzie simply upsets the kill chain that the Germans have in place, right? It has speed, it can evade interceptors and it can evade flak. What do I mean with that? So flak. Because of the Mozzi speed, it is very different to other bombers. And I would qualify the bomber at uh, the Mozzi not as a bomber necessarily, but as a bomber type threat. Because it's not a fighter, it's not really a bomber, but it does things that bombers do, but with almost a performance of a fighter. If you know, obviously there's big differences here, but it's almost like a, the perfect balance between those two feet two things, so it presents a bomber type threat with a fighter type performance. Although of course if you get into a, with a mozzie into a dogfight with a fighter, you're most likely going to lose. And you're also not going to be as, as, as rugged and as able to take you know, punishment as a bomber uh, when you're being fi fired at. But it's sort of that nice little sort of almost golden balance between those two. So when we look at this, uh, the flak, doing the nuisance raids, 
Uh, first of all, as when the mosquito operation started, there's only a limited number of actually of, of mosquitoes being sent out. So the mosquito always creates this dilemma of do we react to it or not? Do we send something up or not? Do we open fire with our flag? Yes or no? And that really creates this dilemma amongst the Germans. And at the same time, if it does go on for bombing missions, you know, a nuisance rate and so on and so forth, because of its speed, there's limited engagement time for the AA defenses. Generally speaking, an AA gun would have 12 minutes to engage a high-flying target. That is from when it enters its kill arc to when it exits it. And do you really want to fire your guns at, you know, a low number of nuisance raiders that are coming in an open formation at different intervals over like a big poke of bombers that is flying on a predictable course. Then for fighters, now the fighters typically have an advantage over the bomber in terms of performance. A fighter can always catch a bomber. It then needs the firepower to shoot that bomber down, which is another dilemma for the fighter with the Germans fixed by putting bigger and more guns on the aircraft. Um, but the performance advantage that a fighter has over the bomber is limited in terms of fighter versus mozzie. Yes, in a dogfight, the fighter will most likely win because you're getting into some close in knife fights. But if you're just straight out running for the hills, then for a fighter to catch the mozzie, even though theoretically it was possible with provisions like MW50 or GM1, um, the Germans have a lot of problems with that. And also, fighters, more than so when they engage the bombers, when they engage mosquitoes, have a high reliance on ground controllers and being vectored to the correct position at the correct time. Because as you can imagine, let's imagine there's a bomber here and you're being vectored in as a fighter. If the ground vector gets the timing or you get the timing wrong and something is you know, off about your position to the bomber, you still have some time to reposition and like then go in for the attack. With a mosquito, you better be in the right time at the right place in order to really get that attack in and also be able to spot that mosquito in time, which again, with night fighting is a problem if you're sitting in a 109 or a 190, which aren't optimized for night fighting and don't have any sort of radar on board either, that it gets very, very difficult. And that's why they're so limited interceptions with single engine fighters against the mosquitoes and the single engine fighters are the only ones that have the performance to actually get the mosquito but more than that just in just a second so to round this up the upsetting the scale chain yeah uh, there's basically a problem for home defense here that the mosquito is because of its speed it, it's a nuisance radar that upsets the normal proceedings you sort of have to react to it or not react to it and both things are basically of presenting you a bad option um, as a pathfinder, the mosquito won't necessarily inflict damage itself, but it will make the bombing that is conducted by other bombers more accurate. And the mosquito speed as well from a sort of a ground vectoring radar, um, radar controller perspective is problematic because you cannot predict where the mosquito will go unlike the bombers. If you see a polk of bombers coming towards a certain area in, in Germany, the ground controls could generally say, okay, they're probably going to hit this city today or hit that city today. With the Mosquito, you can fly zigzag over Germany and nobody would know where you're going because you can be very quickly relocating to another area. Region number two then is the search for countermeasures. And this is where the Germans start appreciating the Mosquito and say like, okay, we need to find a countermeasure. Basically, there's a limited number of available high performance interceptors. And the Germans are always talking about this fact. Yes, they have fighters, but few are equipped and available to tackle the mosquito threat. You know, Germany does have some success in intercepting mosquitoes with specifically rated engines, larger superchargers or MW50 and then GM1. Um, but this requires special provisions and most aircraft don't have these. As well as that, the night fighting problem, the 109 and the 190 are not optimized for it. And this is when the Germans also start looking a little bit more at this, uh, the Heinko 219 as a night fighter solution to the Mosquito. Because they're like, okay, so with this aircraft, we have a new, modern, high performance night fighter twin engine, mind you. But it's high performance enough and with this aircraft we can not only tackle the bombers with heavy firepower but we can also tackle the mosquito most likely so that's when this aircraft also gets a little bit more attention by the germans and is being pushed to the forefront of development as well and the problem that we here have to consider is and i want to go back to me calling the mosquito a bomber type threat with sort of the fighter performance is the old balance is 
you can put more firepower on your plane for lower performance, but that allows you to shoot down bombers more easily. If you take that firepower off and increase the performance of the plane, you're going to be lowering the firepower of the aircraft. And for the Mozzie to be adequately tackled by single engine fighters, at this point in time, sort of 1942 to 1945, what they basically need is an aircraft that has the performance of a fighter, but then also has the firepower of a bomber hunter because you, it is likely that you only get one or two passes, maybe just one pass at the Mosquito. So you need to put down a lot, as much lead as possible down the firing range in order to tackle that aircraft. And that's just a problem. That's not happening. And in fact, when the Germans are first getting sort of being confronted with the performance of the Mosquito, they can't believe it. There's, 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 there's a record of Milch basically telling Goering of the speed of, or the assumed speed of the uh, Mosquito, which they more or less got correct. And Goering doesn't want to hear it. He's like, that's not, and that's impossible for a twin engine fighter. Well, it's not. Um, but there we go. They just can't believe it, that there's this jump in performance uh, with this aircraft. And all of that does accelerate the equipping of the, uh, the fighter squadrons with more specialized aircraft that have higher performance just because there's the Mosquito that is around the corner. And then number, reason number three, and this is a more of future projection of the Germans, is that they are concerned about the increasing number of Mosquitoes that are going to come up. This growing number compounds the previous problems that they have. A few nuisance raiders you can still theoretically ignore. But once there, once there are a lot, and a lot of mosquitoes are being fielded as either pathfinders, bombers, um, night fighters, intruders, then you really start needing, you know, an aircraft type that can tackle this threat and sort of swing the pendulum back into the shield, so the defenses of uh, court. The mosquito as well here with with this, and this is what, what one thing I find interesting is there's this growing number of mosquitoes and the Germans look at the mosquito and it's like actually what the Allies are doing here is incredibly smart because the mosquito is being built with having except for the engines basically a minimal footprint on the production of any other aircraft they have because it's made out of wood it's a completely different resource it doesn't need metal alloys it doesn't need duralunin it doesn't need any of that lightweight metal stuff it's wood so they have almost a parallel production run of aircraft that don't interfere with each other except for the engines right and that is something they, the germans look at this like that's genius we need something like that as well and they, they of course try at the end of the war as well um, but that's that's in, in, in important now i do want to say that wood alone doesn't make a, a, a miracle resource yeah uh, because it's sometimes being nowadays described because people get caught up in this wooden, wooden wonder sort of um, mythology um, that wood is like this mythical resource. It's actually a really poor resource to play, uh, to, to build uh, aircraft and its properties, especially with radar, are completely overstated. Um, but because of a production run, this parallel production run, it makes it very significant. You're like in the last row and you still think wood is like the best of the best of the best of resources to build your fighters with, and that it somehow makes your whole fleet into a stealth fleet, then the Soviet Union would have fielded nothing but stealth fighters. And that's not the case. Like basically all the aircraft were made out of wood or the fighter aircraft were made out of wood. That's not the case. They pop up on radar just fine with the caveat that every aircraft has a different radar cross section. So putting that all together then, we have the speed and sort of this nuisance threat of how do we react to this aircraft because it's presenting a threat but at the same time it's not necessarily a threat early on. You then have the lack of countermeasures that compounds the problem that you're facing with this and then you're starting to get to the realization that there's going to be more and more mosquitoes because for example it's not interfering with the other production runs and it's being produced at a alarmingly alarming rate and it's popping up more and more and it's fulfilling more and more roles and what the Germans basically realize at this point is that they are losing the air war this is one of the things that pops up sometimes in this discussion with the mosquitoes where they're saying like the Allies are starting to field high-performance aircraft like the Mosquito. The Mosquito is not the only one, but it becomes the symbol of this. Until 1942, the thing that the Germans always had is they had high-performance aircraft that were either on par or better than what the Allies had. And that flips in 1942, plus or minus a couple of months. And as that flips, 
the Germans realize that flip. And they say, like, we have to get on top of this again. If we don't, that's problematic. And the mosquito is that symbol. Deeply problematic if you look sort of future scoping and also the way that the war progressed. They're losing the performance war. And once you lose the, lost the performance, you're losing the air war, um, especially in, during World War II. Which turns us back to a reason of why the Germans are going with the jet engine. They just see that they can't keep up with these normal performance competition between the piston engines, even though they're pushing out good engines. You know, Some of these engines the Germans are pushing out have high performance as well. But generally speaking, they've lost that in terms of resources, in terms of performance, in terms of you know, specialist fuel and provisions, MW50, GM1, they're starting to lose the piston war. The jet engine is a potential way out, but I have another video on that. So if you're interested in this subject, the performance, generally speaking, I would also highly recommend this book. And if you're interested in the Mosquito, then I do have something for you because you can, of course, fly one in War Thunder. In War Thunder, you can fly all the famous aircraft for free, including the famous Mosquito that featured in today's video. Sign up for free with the link in the description to join bombastic aerial dogfights and explosive combined arms battles where you, of course, drive tanks to then upgrade your life experience, as you should, to fly aircraft and destroy all those poor swords on the ground, teaching them the meaning of true air power. Playing War Thunder with friends is easy. The game features full cross-platform integration with PC, Xbox and PlayStation. So sign up today to earn limited bonuses with my link in the description. Signing up with my link will give you vehicle decorators and in-game gas injection and premium time, all on the house. It's the best way to start playing War Thunder. As always, a big thank you here to the patrons and channel members who make this channel possible, as well as War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. What's your opinion on the Mosquito? Have you learned anything from this video? Do you want to add anything? Do you want to disagree? Do you want to push back? Put it down in the comments below. Big thank you here to all the patrons and channel members for making this channel possible, and as well as War Thunder for sponsoring this episode. And also a big thank you here once again to Callum Douglas for giving me sort of the spark for and putting me on this path of looking at these protocols a little bit more closely and checking out what the Germans are saying about the Mosquito and coming up with really an interesting topic of discussion, I think. So if you also want to have a look at this aircraft, um, not his, his aircraft, Callum's book is what I wanted to say. Callum's book, it is also the secret horsepower race. Highly recommend it. As always, have a great day. See you in the sky.